That, what memories do you have of the 2013, I think it was, Liberty Bowl, I guess you, when you were on the staff? I thought that was a, a special uh, night. Um, you know, we really played well. Uh, we had a fought uphill uh, to get there. We were four and six, and uh, we had gone to Arkansas, never won. If I'm not mistaken, Mississippi State had never won a game in the state of Arkansas. We won in overtime with a true freshman quarterback. And then we won uh, the Egg Bowl uh, when uh, Dak Prescott came off the bench injured. And, uh, and we went there six and six with uh, momentum. And uh, we played really well, played with a lot of confidence that springboarded us into the 2014 season. Coach, uh, obviously a, a lot of attention on bowl practice, a lot of attention on yesterday too with signing day. Just uh, kind of, if you will, touch on some of the guys that you helped recruit and, and your thoughts about their future. Well, you know, um, uh, it was, a, a, we thought, a great day. Uh, we, we really did well in the state of Mississippi, which uh, Coach Leach has made it uh, very imperative that we recruit the state of Mississippi well. If you always recruit well in the state of Mississippi for Mississippi State, uh, it's always going to uh, give you an opportunity to have a, a good football team. And uh, we think we signed some good players, some good prospects. Uh, you know, one of the young men that I recruited a long time was uh, Trent Singleton. You know, very athletic, very good student, does a lot of things on the football field to help his team, and uh, we're really excited about his future. And Travion Williams uh, uh, from Crystal Springs, uh, we think, you know, that potentially in the long line of the great defensive linemen that we've had here, uh, that he really has a chance. He's got a great work ethic and a great upside, and he and his family, uh, Love Mississippi State, and, and uh, we, we established a special bond uh, there. Guys like Avery Sledge and Calvin Dinkins, you've seen guys go under the radar all the time in this state and come here, especially from at Mississippi State, from coming from the Magnolia State. Uh, do you feel like those two guys have a, have a shot to follow in that line? I do, and uh, you know, uh, I have a saying when we're when we're recruiting is uh, nobody develops uh, Mississippi kids better than Mississippi State. Now, that's not to say other schools can't develop uh, Mississippi kids, but they can't develop them better than we can. And, uh, and that's a selling point on kids like uh, Dinkins and Sledge is uh, those guys can come here and work hard and have that work ethic, the chip on the shoulder. Uh, they ought to prove the world wrong that they were uh, uh, better athletes than people may have thought. And they've got a unique opportunity to come here and to uh, really develop and become special. And that's, you know, what our goals are for. You, you got know? one of those guys last year with Corey Ellington, and, and he's gotten some action this year. Well, how do you see Corey playing in, in that secondary moving forward and where he fits? Well, you know, well, we just finished with the uh, practice for the young guys uh, just a few minutes ago, and uh, he had a good day. Uh, and he's, every time we go out to practice, and that's why bowl preparation is so important for guys like him to get that extra practice. And, uh, you know, it's almost like spring ball for him. And he can go out there and practice and let his hair down, and, and we can coach him, and he can get better and better and better. Is that, is that how you kind of, I mean, how do you look at bowl practice as far as that split between young guys that you're trying to develop and, and the older guys that you're trying to get ready to play a game? Well, it, it's, it's – uh, it's a fine line, you know, you have to uh, get your older players mentally ready to play, heal up injuries, uh, get them enough work where, you know, conditioning and, 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 you know, keep them sharp and ready to go. And then the young guys, you can just let them go out there and just uh, uh, coach them and teach them and grind them and hopefully uh, – uh, they'll continue to get better. Then you go back through spring ball, and then by the time you play next fall, you know, hopefully they've made that jump and where they can, you know, come in games and start helping you. Since Saturday, since y'all started bowl prep, the guys seem really fired up about this opportunity. And what have you seen to, from their preparation about how to take advantage of this opportunity? Well, I think that here at Mississippi State, uh, we, we have a group of kids that come here to play uh, they love play football. They love to play football. They love playing. They love uh, putting the helmet and shoulder pads on and a pair of cleats and running around out there. And you know, and uh, they'll stay out there all night long if you let them. You know, hey coach, one more play. You know, give me one more play. So an opportunity to extend our season and have a, a opportunity to play in a bowl against a quality opponent uh, is is really good for the program.
Coach, obviously an opportunity for some of your younger defensive linemen to, to get some bowl reps. What have you seen from that group and, and who, who's that mainly been? Well, no question. Uh, the bowl game is great because you get those extra practices in. And a guy that's really kind of shined a little bit is, is Trayvon Marshall, you know, and, and uh, he's a little, still a little bit inconsistent uh, with a good day here, bad day there, and, and trying to work through that. But that's a good part of the bowl practices that you get a chance to work with them and, and get more reps out of them. Um, but he's got some explosion off the ball, and, and uh, he's built some strength up over the uh, season. So really looking forward to uh, continuing to develop him and get him going. Uh, King Ani takes some, some snaps in there to keep him uh, kind of fresh as he's kind of a, a role guy that's got a couple of snaps in there through the course of the season. Um, you also got uh, Armando Cooley, uh, who we're working on trying to keep his shoulder pads down because he's, 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 he's a, a large human being and got great strength. Uh, just gets his pads up a little bit, and, and uh, that'll ultimately get him in trouble uh, when it's all said and done. And then Deontay uh, Anderson is, is working at the defensive end spot along with um, Ty Mataafa. And uh, both of those guys are doing a great job of, of, of learning the techniques because they have a lot that they do. They play a five or four and then bump down into the B gap from time to time. So uh, all of that has been a great uh, learning experience for them. Obviously, you probably smiled a good bit yesterday with, with Calvin Dinkins and Travion Williams and Dante Russell. I know you, you still want to add to that group in February, but uh, what was it like bringing those three guys in? Uh, those three guys, plus Jacarius Clayton, I mean, was a, yeah. was an outstanding uh, a day, you know, and, and credit to the staff and, and everything. Uh, every, you know, everybody's got a hand in it and, and working the communication angles and everything that way. And, and Coach Leach said it to stay persistent. And, and I think that's what we were able to do. And, and it's great when here at Mississippi State and you can get the defensive line guys uh, in the state of Mississippi, you know, and I think that's, that speaks volumes. Uh, and they're very athletic. And uh, I think they're going to do some great things for us. And of course, Jacare is going to be here at mid-year. So we get a chance to see him right away uh, through the spring practice. So it was, a, it was a great day. I went over to Bob's and got me a a super big uh, concrete, uh, whatever thing they got there was some cookie dough in it. So it was pretty good. <laughs> What's your expectations as far as uh, when you expect Jordan Davis back? You think you'll be able to do some things in the spring? You know, it, it's it, it, that's got to go with the training staff, and they got to kind of work that out. You know, you obviously don't want a guy come back too early. And, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure the timeline just yet, but I do know that he is ahead of schedule. What about uh, you know you you look ahead and and knock on wood? I know. It's a long time between now and, and next September, and I know things can happen and kids can decide to leave. But on paper, it looks like you're going to return your entire two deep defensive line, plus return Jordan, get him back in the mix. How do you mix? It's like Mike asked Tony Hughes a while ago. How do you mix in the the bowl practices, making sure you get the younger guys rep, but also getting getting the focus on the bowl game with such an experienced group? Uh, no question. The way the way Coach kind of uh, <coughs> structures the practice is that the older guys get a a good majority of the reps in the early part, and then we kind of turn them loose, and then the young guys, they get a chance to, to do specific one-on-one -on -one reps. They get a chance to do specific uh, team reps uh, to get them moving in the, in the right direction. So as you go through the course of the year, you have your Thursday night football stuff that you do. Uh, that switches over to some Sunday night football stuff, and then now in the bowl game, bowl prep, they get a significant amount of the snaps. Now as we get closer to the bowl, it'll kind of uh, alter just a little bit, and then now all of a sudden, uh, the older guys will start getting the majority of those reps, but but you know these early reps and the early practices where we're trying to knock off some rust with the older guys, it's a great chance for the young guys to to get some valuable reps in there and, and learn the defense and offense and and uh, kind of give us a little bit of a preview of what we're going to see in the spring. I was going to say, is it hard for them to go from being scout team to them running Mississippi State stuff? Like, you know, uh, definitely definitely tough. Uh, but again, when we go Thursday night football through the course of the, the year, so yeah, each Thursday that. night, you know, they, they're getting yeah. scrimmage and they're getting the calls that we're calling yeah. on game day, you know. And so uh, from a learning standpoint, they kind of stay into it, right? They're not running it every day in practice. But I'll, I will say this, our graduate assistants do a great job of matching up some of the calls <laughs> for the scout team. You know, if the opponent that we're playing runs a certain front, well, they'll call it what we call it. So. The guys are getting, you know, some mental reps, so to speak, in that sense. But when you get that that Thursday night, every Thursday, playing that that scrimmage for the younger guys, it keeps them dialed in and, and you know keeps them refreshed on what they learned during the uh, fall camp period.
I know you pretty much focus on your group, but what's the overall attitude of the team at practice and a lot of joking around, pepping yourself? You know, oh, yeah. Opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's a great time. You know, school's over for those guys, and, <laughs> and uh, they all did a great job in the classroom, and, and, and it's, it's a reward for a great season. And, of course, you always want to have more wins on that uh, win column, uh, and, and we'll continue to work towards that. But the big thing for us is to finish out the, the year right, and, and that is winning the bowl game. And, and those guys, they understand it, and, and they know that when it's time to, for football, it's time to put the work in, and, and they know that after that, it's, it's, they can have a little bit of fun. But uh, I tell you what, it, I was telling one of the, the coaches, it kind of feels like we're at bowl practice at the bowl site with the weather uh, that we're having. And uh, so it makes it, you know, I, I, to me, that brings up the energy level. You got the sun shining, and it's what, I don't know, 60 degrees out there today. I mean, it, I had my, my short sleeves on, and I was ready to roll. So uh, I know I was feeling good. And, and coaches feel good, players feel good, and they know that, again, uh, it's a reward for a great season. What kind of challenges does Texas Tech present I mean, for, your, for your guys? Well, I mean, you got the big guys up front, and obviously you got to be able to take care of them. And, and, and throwing and running the ball is, you know, a thing that they do and a good balance that they have. So, you know, we're, we're going to have our work cut out for us. And bowl game is always unique because it's, it's someone that you're not used to. And so uh, you got to kind of get familiar with their personnel and, and, and what they do. And, uh, and then you got to find, you know, it's just like any other game. You, you got to find a way to stop their best plays or at least try to slow them down. And, uh, so we'll be challenged, but if, if we can play with low pad level like we like, uh, keep our feet moving, then uh, you know we've got a we've got a chance. And so we got to focus on that. Fundamentals are key, especially in bowl games. I know you, you guys are getting ready for Texas Tech, but also a good time for your young guys to get some bowl reps and then get some of that experience. Uh, who's some of your guys, your young guys, you're watching? Yeah, three guys for me: is John Lewis, you know, Ty Cooper, and then uh, Nick Jarrett. They're all three out there rotating. Uh, getting a lot of reps in these team periods and seven seven and one on one pass rush and so it's a great to me it's a great setup because you get a jump on spring ball for those guys you're just you know working base calls base technique and and uh, you know you, you really all those reps add up so I'm excited to see those guys run around John to me is the one out of the three that's he's been really really improved I'm excited about what he's showing so I'll uh, just continue to improve as we go through this bowl prep you got to look at the future yesterday with some guys you brought in I, I know you. Uh, we're on Khalid Moore pretty hard. I ask you to talk about him a little bit and what are, and other guys that you were on that mm -hmm. you signed yesterday. Yeah, I was pretty excited about the all three of the linebackers. You know, Khalid is a guy who comes from a good program down there, great family. They expect him to work hard. He expects a lot of himself. Uh, he's a tough, hard-nosed football player that plays with high effort, high motor. And I'm just excited to get him here. He's the type of guy that, that fits in perfectly here and will add to you know what we what we expect. Um, and then Avery Sledge is a long athlete, played quarterback, played safety, played linebacker. Uh, and his ceiling is so high because of the program he's been in and then the fact that he's a three-sport athlete, you know, basketball and baseball. So as he adds weight and gets in a, in a program that always focuses on his football, um, he's got a huge, huge future. Javay Gilmore, kind of the same thing. Long, athletic, has frame to add weight. Guy that's played three sports, you know, entire high school career, and just when he focuses on one thing, eating, you know, lifting, getting bigger, focusing on football from a fundamental standpoint, he's got uh, a lot of upside. So, all those guys, I'm excited. You've been about. doing this for a long time. When you see a guy like Jave, who was also the lead receiver on his team, and a guy like Avery Sledge, who was starting quarterback for his team, I mean, how much does that stuff jump off of the tape of you when you see their type of athleticism? No, I love it. I mean, I think anytime on our in our defense, to me, that's the best thing about our defense. Uh, it's so multiple that you can get a guy like that, and, and you don't have to just slate him into one spot. You know, he can he can do a lot of different things for you, whether it be on the line of scrimmage or off the ball. And so, a guy that has played at all different levels of defense, and then also on the offensive side, just so, shows the versatility. Oh, uh, I know he. He don't talk much anyway, but I know Tyrus had me come out and officially say that he's coming back, but it sounds like he's coming back for another year. How big of a boost is that for that defense? Well, that would be the number one signing, uh, signing right there, you know, if we get him back. That would be that would be huge for our defense because he's a guy that uh, you speak about Javay's versatility or Avery's versatility. Well, Tyrus is the same guy. You know, he played safety at a knee high school. He played safety at Coleman, I believe, and, then, and now he's just progressed. And the thing that I keep talking to him about is, you know, Tyrus really hasn't had an opportunity to develop fundamentally other than last spring ball, you know, and then this past fall camp. So he's got a lot of upside to his, uh, his game right now as well. And 
we just hope to continue to add to that. What are you looking for? Uh, I know you can't say specific names, but special teams, you're looking to add some guys? Yeah, no question. I mean, we've got to add depth and we've got to add immediate competition to, to fix it, you know? And so, uh, yeah, like you said, I can't speak on specific names. There's a couple of things in the works right now uh, going on behind the scenes. So uh, we just got to finish. From your perspective with your group or team overall, how, how much pep in the step they have since y'all got back together for preparation? Uh, I thought the first day we, we kind of jog around a little bit, and I thought the last few days have been really good. Yeah, I thought they came out and worked hard and, and been efficient with our reps, and, and uh, I've been pretty excited so far uh, how those last three practices have went. Younger receivers, who, who is that in bowl practice and how are those guys looking? Yeah, the way, you know, Coach Leach likes to practice, we, you know, we let our kind of varsity so forth go for about an hour or so, and then the younger guys get out there and get a lot of reps. So uh, Antonio Harmon right now is probably getting, getting a lot of action. Uh, Rob Ross still, it's good to have him back, but he's not 100% yet, so he, he's gaining on that with his sprained ankle a little bit. Um, but um, Caleb Duck, he's getting a lot of work from, you know, trying to find out exactly where he can be for us next year. And, and he does, he does, he's done some good things when he's gotten his opportunity. He just happened to be behind Makai all year, who's, who's had an excellent year. So, uh, but yeah, a lot of guys get a lot of work, and, and it had just been a good few days. Is Teddy still with you, or is he inside? Teddy's on the inside right now. Teddy goes back and forth, Rufus kind of goes back and forth. We'll kind of figure out where the best options are. Uh, but both those guys should be slot guys. But they're both capable of playing outside as well. Um, so Obviously, we um, had a good day yesterday. I know you can only talk about a couple of them, but yep. uh, I guess that was Marquez Dortz and yep. um, so Caden Pope and uh, Janoris Hopson, Jay Hop. Yeah, good, good group, good crew of guys. Um, one or two more guys coming in January, one guy maybe in the portal. So receiver's always a position that if we can add a, another player to our group, we're going to try to. Uh, but those guys, that was a good group. They, yesterday was a good day uh, across the board, really. Uh, Mojo, obviously, a talented guy. Uh, again, his guy played every position. Uh, he can do a lot of things with the ball in his hands, and, and we're going to find a way to get it to him. And he's a tough, hard nose. Uh, again, a guy that, that's an excellent defensive back that you, you, you like him because he's tough and he, and, he, and he plays hard. But, uh, but the ball will be in his hands. We like him at receiver. And, and I'm going to enjoy coaching him. Fast kid, too. You know, true true speed with him and some of these other guys is is a difference we're really looking for. When you look, you look at the, you mentioned him and, and obviously Pope and, and Janaris were the same way. A lot of them, I know Pope went both ways. Yeah. I know Janaris played Wildcat quarterback, yeah. running back. All. Yeah. How much has it helped them accelerate that curve when they come here and just – A lot. I know it's, I know it's still difficult because it's college, yeah. but they got one position on their plate and that's it. Yeah, uh, but it just it, – it's just what they know, what they've been around, what they've been exposed to. The, their understanding of the game of football is greater when, when you play both sides of the ball. Uh, I've always liked coaching a guy paid quarterback in high school because uh, you have to play every snap. You know, sometimes you just play receiver. Some snaps you play, some you don't, some you have no idea, and you just go look for the ball. So uh, that certainly helps their knowledge of the game. So when you bring them in, they just have a better grasp of defenses, of coverages, of man and zone, which is which is really important in what we do. So, you know, all those guys have – are good, sharp young men with, with really good skill set. So uh, looking forward to seeing how they kind of piece out. Um, Jay Hobson will probably definitely be an inside guy, uh, but uh, but the other two guys could, could play about anywhere. You talked about guys moving in and out and switching around yep. and moving around. How's all that kind of going since bowl practice? Yeah, from, from uh, in bowl practice, those guys have stayed on the inside, uh, and that's kind of where our numbers are right now. Uh, typically during the fall, we will do our best to keep them at one position. If we can keep them at one slide and, and coach them up and just keep getting reps there, that's that's ideal for us. Uh, but if a guy gets hurt or, or, or something happens where you need a guy in another slot, the, the next best player is, is going to that opening. So we try to play about eight receivers uh, in every game, the four wide receiver positions we have. And, uh, and if there's a ninth or tenth player out there that's the next best player, we're, we're going to put him in the best slot that, that he can show up for. How much did you enjoy just getting back on the road this year and recruiting after that not being an option? Like yeah, that? it's, uh, it, it was good. Uh, you enjoy you enjoy getting in schools. You enjoy seeing coaches. You enjoy seeing families. You enjoy going in homes. And um, yeah, no, what an unusual year yet. Last year, I'm trying to think. Somebody, I want somebody to find the exact number of players that we signed last year that we've never seen before. And, and it was about 12 or 13. It may have been more. Um, but I remember when I talked to uh, Rob Rock Thomas, and he was listed as 6'3", about 195. And I remember talking to him the day he showed up. I said, now, if you show up and you're about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, 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 we're going to have a problem. <laughs> and, uh, and he is 6'2 and a half. He's, he's, he's a big, tall guy. But I'd never seen him before. Yeah. Never been in school. Never met his family. Never didn't, didn't know much about him except uh, never met his coach. I still haven't met his coach. Um, his receiver coach drove him over one day. I, I, I met him. 
So to be able to go see a guy, to shake a guy's hand, to kind of you, you get so much of a, of a better grasp of, of who guys are and, uh, and what they're made of and what kind of program they're in, watch them practice. So, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to, to being able to get back on the road. Still, there's a few schools in my area I have not been in. So I'm looking forward to that and uh, when we get back in January to get in every school that's uh, in, in my area in the state. Just as a, as a group overall, and, and obviously the COVID affected y'all last year with no spring practice and guys getting a new offense thrown on. Yeah. How much more, I mean, obviously adding Rob Rod and Makai yeah. and, and Calvin helped the receivers yeah. group, but just the guys that you had last year and this year, the difference in their play. Yeah, I, again, when what we do and what has been done here in the past on offense for QBs and receivers is so different to start with, but to not have a spring, to not have a summer, to not have – just hands, meetings, just every single thing that is this offense, yeah. repeating every single snap we run. Yeah, it was, we, we go back and watch our cut-ups that first year, and there's a lot of just bad routes, bad alignments, bad fundamentals. Just just hadn't gotten the opportunity to coach them as well as we'd like to have. So to be able to go through that, and every day we get better at that. And, and, and Coach Leach, I mean, he does. He emphasizes, you know, this, this practice with these young guys, we are constantly developing guys, constantly trying to make sure that next group's ready to play when they get their chance. So every rep we take, uh, everybody gets a little bit better. And just from your group or a team perspective, as you witness it, just how excited are they for this opportunity for this bowl game? It's fun. Now, bowl games are fun. And again, getting out of COVID and going to a bowl game. You know, last year, we, we I felt like we had a week. You're playing in a week. So we had four hard practices and we went and played. So to be able to go to a bowl game, to be able to kind of Get bowl gifts to spend a couple of days up there. Now everybody's excited about that. Uh, so hopefully we're, we're prepared and ready to go. Uh, it's nice to have stability amongst your staff. That you know what we're doing and what we're coaching, and, and everybody's kind of going in the same direction and really trying to progress to become a better team. So we feel good about that, and we're, we're looking forward to our opportunity to play Texas Tech.